Welcome to a captivating journey through one of Europe's hidden gems. In this video, we're uncovering the top 10 things to do in Porto. From historic treasures to culinary delights, Porto offers an unforgettable experience that will leave you mesmerized. So, buckle up and get ready to explore the heart of Portugal's second largest city. Number 10. Porto Cathedral. This stern-looking building calls the shots from the oldest part of Porto. You'll arrive on the Terreiro da Sé, an esplanade that lets you survey the city's rooftops and monuments like the Clarigos Church Tower. Despite going through a lot of changes over time, the cathedral has kept big pieces of its original 12th-century architecture. When it was built it would have had a defensive role, as you may tell from the buttresses, arrow loops and crenellations. Inside there's a narrow Romanesque nave and choir, conducting you towards the apse, which got an opulent Baroque redesign in the 17th century. Number 9. Foz do Douro. To blow away the cobwebs make for the Foz do Douro, a trendy district where the Douro enters the ocean. There's a long promenade with palms and pines, and a pergola that you might recognize if you've been to Nice. The pergola da Foz was installed in the 1930s as the mayor's wife fell in love with the one on the promenade des Anglais. The Farol Mole do Douro lighthouse meanwhile guided vessels in and out of the Douro for 120 years before being deactivated in 2009. New, modern restaurants pop up in this quarter by the week, and when the sun is setting you couldn't ask for a more romantic backdrop for stroll. Number 8. Casa da Musica, a treasured modern addition to Porto's cityscape, the Casa da Musica is a concert hall that opened in 2005. Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas oversaw the design along with high-tech sonography and acoustics firms. This is one of the rare music venues that is also worth seeing when nobody's playing. You can go in for a tour of the 1,300-seater venue, which tore up the rulebook on auditorium design and has two walls composed entirely of glass. On some days you'll be able to hear the orchestra rehearsing, and if that whets your appetite for high culture you can dress up in the evening to hear famous soloists and the Porto Symphony Orchestra. Number 7. Praca da Liberdade. The grand open spaces of this square and boulevard in Santo Ildefonso feel a world away from the narrow streets of the Cais da Ribeira. The Praca da Liberdade was plotted as a new urban layout in the 18th century and bounded to the south by the neoclassical Palacio das Cardosas, an 18th century convent turned hotel. There's an equestrian statue of Pedro IV of Brazil, remembered as a democratic reformer. The streets around are some of the poshest in the city, with imposing civic buildings, designer boutiques and the Belle Epoque Majestic Café on Rua Santa Catarina. Number 6. Clarigo's Church. The 75.6-meter-high tower of this Baroque church can be spotted from most parts of Porto and was the tallest building in the country when it was completed. It's a beautiful monument with delicate carvings all the way up and a clock so high you need to take few steps back to be able to read it properly. This was the last section of the church to be completed and dates to 1763, with a design inspired by the Campaniles of Tuscany. If you don't mind the queue and the 240 steps you'll be rewarded with a complete panorama of the city from the top. Number 5. Palacio da Bolsa. Porto's old stock exchange was built next to the Church of São Francisco after its cloisters burned down during the Siege of Porto in 1832. The exterior was finished by 1850 and has a neoclassical design, while the eclectic interiors were decorated right up to the start of the 20th century. You have to go in to comprehend the richness of the sculpture, decorative carvings, plasterwork, frescoes, chandeliers and tiles. The stuccoed Moorish revival Salao Arabe is almost overwhelming, while the monumental Patio dos Nacos courtyard is lit by an octagonal metal and glass roof. Number 4. Church of São Francisco. The last Gothic monument in Porto is this church completed in 1425. Wander around to the apse to ponder the long lancet windows and then head back to the main facade where an ornate portal is crested by a lovely rose window. The interiors were redecorated from the 1500s to the 1700s and have some of the most lavish gilded woodwork you could hope to see. The old Gothic vaults, walls and pillars are covered up by intricately carved panels representing birds, cherubs and foliage. Number 3. Luis I Bridge. An industrial symbol for Porto, this twin-level metal arched bridge opened in 1886. It was conceived by the German engineer Theophil Sirig who co-founded the Eiffel Company. The bridge crosses the steep, rocky banks of the Douro and rises to almost 45 meters. 
There's a bird's eye view of the Kais Darabira from the top level, which is also used by Portos Light Railway. After that you could board the funicular Dos Guinde to get down to the waterside. And if you still haven't seen enough, cross on the lower deck for pedestrians and local road traffic. Number 2. Sir Alves Museum and Villa. In the west of Porto there are several elements to Sir Alves that makes such a great day out. First there's the Villa, Casa de Sir Alves, a graceful art deco property built between 1925 and 1944 and with designers like Charles Siklis and René Lalique recruited to craft the interiors. The villa looks out on sumptuous terraced grounds with tree-lined avenues, topiaries, regimented lawns and pergolas. Then on the other side of the park is the Contemporary Art Museum, which opened in 1999 for high-profile temporary exhibitions. There are normally four or five on at the same time for present and past luminaries of modern and contemporary art, from Joan Miro to Liam Gillick. Number 1. Kais da Ribeira, a little chaotic and great fun to explore, Porto's riverside area is a very picturesque piazza where tourists and locals mingle. There are bars and restaurants around every corner, and these line the riverside walk too. You'll have a perfect shot of the iconic Luis I bridge from here, and if you duck through the arcades there's a confusing maze of steep streets and stairways between pastel-painted houses in varying states of repair. The Kais da Ribeira has been spruced up a little in the last few years and information boards have been installed to tell you about this district's characters and businesses when it was Porto's hive of commerce. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more exhilarating travel guides. Until then, keep exploring and creating memories in every corner of this beautiful world.